Hi, so a while ago I bought a bunch of these small um, microcontrollers uh, from WCH, the CH552 ones with uh, a 16 pin case and I want to show a little bit what, what I do with them and what I made until now. Here are some more of them and these are the beginning when I got them first. This was the first PCB I made and tried out. The schematic is pretty, pretty simple and you can program it directly over USB. Uh, it's just, uh, it just need one resistor to bring it into download mode and two caps for the power supply. And I will talk a little bit about the peripherals. So here are some hardware specs. So it is an 8051 processor inside of the chip and an integrated uh, oscillator up to 24 megahertz. The USB got the own 84 megahertz oscillator. It got three timers, the standard 8051 timers, two 8-bit pulse width modulation, uh, one SPI master and slave, but it just can do mode 0 and mode 3. It has two UARTs, uh, four ADC 8-bit inputs and six touch inputs that can the cascade to 15, I think. It has 16K ROM, uh, 1K XRAM, and 256 bytes standard uh, 8051 RAM. It is possible to get I2C working with Bitbang up to two, uh, up to 100K bits a second, and yeah, I. After I got them, I made these PCBs to just play around with them. It has two touch inputs, two LEDs, and the USB is connected. Uh, on, on the back side, there are uh, one button, and to get it here into programming mode, you have to bridge these two holes with a tweezer or so, and then you can plug it in and it will be in the programming mode. Also here is some example, it's just um, um, 10 LEDs, so all ports are used and also the USB is connected. And here to bring it into download mode, you just have to press the button and plug it into the USB port. And here are the, the LEDs in a row. I will try to plug it in the PC. So it's just one example where the LEDs go on and off. And if I now press the button and plug it into the PC. Uh, okay, let's do it again. Uh, so now it's, and as you hear, it was successfully connected. Then I made this example. Here is one chip on a little adapter board to breadboard friendly. Uh, one DS3231 uh, RTC clock and an IPS display with SPI bus. And that's all connected to the chip. Unfortunately, the SPI bus is only software bit banked. The reason for that is the display needs mode 2 of SPI, but I only can use mode 0 and mode 3. Yeah. And here you can see that the display is running. I can turn it off or on. It will boot and then will show just a little text. The current milliseconds and the rate it takes 
to build the screen. So 550 milliseconds to write to the screen. Then we have the clock and the date and just one color example and another text on the bottom. Here it's also very simple. We just have one 10K resistor and if we um, connect it to the USB D minus and turn it on again, it will directly go into download mode. And if I turn it on without um, the resistor, it will just go into normal mode. Here is the schematic of it. It's pretty simple, just um, two capacitors and one resistor. And of course, uh, different modules. It's um, yeah, just simple connected. I will show a little bit of the code. Um, it is programmed via SDCC and that is C code. And I was able to use pretty much of the Adafruit ST7899 library and ported it to C. Here I will talk a little bit about the definition. Um, these parts are used to describe the function of one part. Just like in Arduino, we have uh, now the port res and we can turn it on or off. The port is uh, 90 for port 1 and B0 for port uh, 3. And the pins from the ports. Just like that. Then we have some uh, variables that we define and with the X data we can say it should be put into the X RAM and not in the internal RAM from the AT51 because that is only 256 bytes long and it will, will get pretty quick, pretty full. Um, we have a millisecond counter and we have the start command for the display and some other variable. Then we have the font for the text on the display here. That is a stock font from Adafruit. It's pretty long and not in another file right now. Then we have the SPI software write function. I will don't go through it. It's just copied from the Adafruit library. Uh, here's the startup code, the, init, the initialization of the display, uh, where we want the display to put the RAM pointer um, and some other functions. I will don't go through it. Um, here's uh, the text, the font write function. Um, it's also something wrong. Here is a timer zero used for the millisecond uh, counter. It just had, had an overflow of one millisecond at 24 megahertz. And so we exactly know the milliseconds. Then I have a print function here because um, the AT51 kernel don't like so much the strings. Then here is the write function for the real-time clock module. It's just a software I2C. And here is the read function. Then we come to the main loop. It's just uh, the configuration for the frequency. Um, it waits 10 milliseconds. Then the debug interface gets um, initialized. The timer zero gets initialized and the interrupt is activated. Then it will initialization the I squared C, sorry. Um, here it will initialize the display. It will make the whole screen blue. It will put the cursor to 0 0.0 and 0. Text size is 2 for the display and then we will print something. Uh, yeah, just the display function. Here's uh, the while, so the main loop um, 
where it goes round and round. Uh, it will read the triumph on the RTC clock. It will put the cursor to the right position. Then it will measure the time that it takes to print the display. So this is the, the rate um, variable. And here it will use printf to make the integers to a right string format. And then it will print it to the screen. And here it goes back to the loop, to the while loop. And yeah, that's it. I will show maybe a little bit different if I change this. To some other text. So just uh, hello. I need to save it and I will use the git console to use SDCC. It's in the manual. I will put it in the description down below so you can uh, have a manual how to install it. I just need to run make and it will make the new code and to program the whole thing we have the WCHISP tool it will recognize the USB device if I put it into download mode and now we have here the device yeah. and I just can click on download and it will restart with the new code and now we have hello on the bottom. Yeah, that's it. I hope you liked it. Uh, it's, mm, I don't see many uses for this chip, but if you want to use USB with it, here I made one example where I can plug it in and it will write the keyboard. So just um, keyboard emulator, you have a serial port over USB if you want to, or some CDC um, connections. Yeah, okay. Thank you for watching. Bye.